a multi-million dollar mixed-use baseball stadium is being built right here. Historically located in a black neighborhood and now an industrial section of the city, this project will transform downtown Knoxville. So what is this project? Who's paying for it? Can one man be doing all this? And are there any downsides? Welcome. I'm a trained engineer, a non-practicing urban planner, and a real estate enthusiast. My name is Andres. This is How to Build a World. This complex will be the Knoxville Multi-Use Stadium, an entertainment venue that will have around six to 8,000 seats and will be the new home of the Tennessee Smokies baseball team. And this stadium will be surrounded by condos, apartments, retail stores, office space, green space, and a pedestrian plaza. And after a couple years, there could be a grocery store and a pedestrian greenway connection. I need to admit, I don't care much about sports, but sports without a doubt creates a sense of place and community for any city. So this whole area is below an interstate bridge that is dividing the property from the actual downtown. And this will pose a challenge for the project, which is fascinating that they're building residential housing next to an interstate bridge next to a loud stadium. There's nothing wrong with that. I just hope they soundproof the building or something. So right now, this area is made up of empty space. But no matter how abandoned or empty this place is, there's a rich and controversial history in this part of the city which I got over in my East Knoxville video, which you can check out in the link down below. A great change is coming to this neglected part of the city. And you might not be thinking, is the city paying for this? Oh, no, 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 my friends. This project is a vision of one man, one powerful and gorgeous man, and his name is Randy Boyd. Randy Boyd is the president of the University of Tennessee, the chairman and advisor for higher education to the state of Tennessee, the founder of his own company, the owner of many sports leagues, including the Smokies, and finally at heart, a real philanthropist. And there's nothing this beast of a man cannot do. Randy is the owner of the Smokies baseball team that is currently located in Kodak, Tennessee, east of Knoxville. And a few years ago, he announced that he will move the Smokies to downtown Knoxville. And he's working very closely with the city to make this project happen. So the deal is, is that the stadium will be owned and operated by the sports authority who is jointly created by the city of Knoxville and Knox County. So that means taxpayer money is going into this. Well, that'll be the stadium part itself and the residential and commercial spaces that'll be privately built and owned. According to Knox News, the baseball park will be the centerpiece of a massive development project near the old city proposed by Boyd. He has promised he could bring $142 million of private money to build 630,000 square feet of restaurants, retail shops, and residences around the stadium. If Knoxville or Knox County pay $52 million to $65 million for a publicly owned stadium. Wow, that, that is some casual request to ask a city. So for some context, an average Walmart is around 100,000 square foot in size. So Boyd is promising to build around six Walmarts worth of development in downtown. And that's about half the size of the current downtown. So Boyd will cover a large portion of the bill himself. Color me impressed. The baseball stadium was proposed at the beginning of 2020. So the impact of the pandemic has slightly slowed down construction. And this has made the project itself more expensive, meaning that the pieces of materials has added $13 million more to the stadium. But Boyd, being the supernatural being that he is, he helped the city obtain a state grant that will cover the difference to the original cost. And after thinking about it for a while, why did Boyd decide to move the baseball team in Knoxville? Particularly, why downtown? I saw the flashes in the dark, colors on the wall, bright against the monochrome, where I felt so strong. To answer this question, let us do some investigating. And the first thing to know about downtown is that it's a great location to place mixed use development even though you could build mixed use anywhere, but American zoning does not allow for such contamination. The real question is, is this project worth it? Well, let's follow the money. Let's put on a real estate perspective. The first thing to look at in real estate is demographics. What kind of people live in downtown? For my research, I look at the economic impact for this project. So let's see what it says. All right, here we go. Downtown's population is growing. Good. Young people are moving to downtown. 
Good. Many big companies are in downtown. There are low employment rates and the university is located near downtown. That is great. And lastly, there are no other stadiums this size or shape located in the city. That's perfect. All right, now the baseball analytics. Got to do our homework here. Other cities across the US are building baseball stadiums in downtown and they're definitely making bank with them. Cool, let's follow that trend. The Tennessee Smokies is a solid double A baseball team with a growing fan base, therefore people will show up at the games. That is a guarantee. And I know that because my coworkers won't stop talking about it. The stadium renting space will guarantee revenue for the city. Good. And lastly, ticket sales, concessions, and merchandise will guarantee tax dollars to the city. Awesome. Let's start building this thing. Whoa, hold your horses. All this information is worthless if we cannot prove that taxpayer money will have a return on investment. So this document will have to prove that. All right, now the most important part. What is the direct spending for the stadium? And this is broken down into two sections, construction and operating costs. First, construction costs. This includes the stadium itself, the $65 million or so from the city. This covers materials, labor, and professional fees. Good, we're done with that. And now, operation costs. This is the part that the city and our man Boyd is most excited about. Operation costs is broken down into two more parts. I know this is long, but just hold on a little bit more. These are in and out of facility spending and development spending. But to make more sense, in and out of facility spending are two different things. To fix it, I'm gonna change it into in facility spending and development spending because out of development spending is the same as development spending. The, the report can be weird. So in facility spending are ticket sales, concessions, merchandise, and other small things inside the stadium. And this makes up a little bit of the revenue. And now the big two, out of facility spending and development spending. And they include the creation of hotels, restaurants, bars, shops, residential buildings, office space, public transportation, and any other type of development that is not the baseball stadium. And all of these items will bring the biggest money to the city and private investors. So after several years, the value of these developments will generate several hundreds of millions of dollars per year. And this will be tax revenue and increase in land value. So there will be a slow changing creation of a new urban district. So a tourist destination and a new iconic neighborhood will make the citizens of Knoxville very proud. Well, that might depend on which citizen you ask. The initial cost of this project will be around $206 million, including $65 million from the city and $141 million in development. And other costs will be added over time, which include utility upgrades to the neighborhood. And after 30 years, it will amount to about $480 million in total. Randy Boyd is investing a lot of time, money, and resources by believing that this development will succeed and bring a renaissance to the east part of downtown. And I know he will because Boyd owns a lot of the land in his neighborhood and he is donating some of that land for the stadium. So if he is right, then by golly, he's gonna be an even richer man now that he is. But if no change happened, then we'll have created a cute baseball park in downtown. But my investigations showed me that this is a giant win-win situation for the city and Boyd and his friends. Sadly, there's a dark side to revitalizing a poor neighborhood. And that is the problem with gentrification. The definition of gentrification is a process whereby the character of a poor urban area is changed by wealthier people moving in, improving housing, and attracting new businesses, and will typically displace current inhabitants in the process. This may not be a problem since this whole neighborhood is just empty industrial lots. However, the surrounding neighborhoods are mainly made up of low-income African-American families. So if this development creeps outside this project's boundaries, it might just price out the families that have generationally lived in this part of town or it might just create a divided land of rich development on one side and low income housing on the other. Looking at the report, the type of development going around the stadium will be expensive luxury housing and apartments. So that will allow the city to give this neighborhood upgrades and slowly allowing the real estate market to expand and build denser housing in downtown. So downtown will get even more gentrified than it is right now. And it will take time until affordable housing, that's not student housing, to be created, if at all, actually. So, City of Knoxville, just make sure you take into consideration all the citizens and listen to the families living nearest to this development. And I'm watching you. So, I would like to end by saying that the stadium should be completed around 2023 or 2024. 
and it will host around 200 different events, where a third of these events will be Smokey's baseball games. So I look forward to seeing how the city will upgrade this neighborhood going under the interstate, because I'm kind of afraid of this place right now. So I think this is a win-win scenario for the city, the citizens, and our scaringly magnificent and awesome man, Randy Boyd. I doubt I will care much about sports anytime soon, but I do love me some cool buildings that can seriously make an impact to a neighborhood. History is being made in the city, and getting to see it change during my lifetime is a home run in my books. So please like and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.